Welcome to Electra Online. This next JE Advanced question is quite a question. It's almost crazy that they put these kind of questions on the JE test, but I suppose that separates the really bright student from the very bright students. <laughs> uh, well, let's take a look at it and see why I'm so surprised that a question like this would actually appear in a JE test. It deals with flow in a pipe, and instead of a fluid, well, it's, it's, instead of a liquid, it's a gas flowing through a pipe, and it, the gas goes through an adiabatic expansion, which means that the volume will not remain constant if the diameter changes, so that complicates things a bit. So when we read the question, it says an ideal gas, and, and uh, let me uh, highlight some things. So we're dealing with an ideal gas, so we can use the ideal gas equation. Uh, it starts with a density of 0.2 kilograms per cubic meter entering a chimney of height h at the rate of 0.8 kilograms per second. Now, this is the amount mass per unit time that goes through the pipe and that remains constant. So it's not that the volume of liquid remains constant going through the pipe, it's the mass that remains constant. So that's the difference here. So from its lower end, and escapes through the upper end as shown. So there's the pipe, it starts with a smaller pipe and expands to a bigger pipe, bigger diameter, and the flow is upward like this. The cross-sectional area at the lower end is 0.1 square meters, and the upper end is 0.4 square meters, so the cross-sectional area quadruples in size. The pressure and the temperature at the lower end are 600 pascals and 300 Kelvin, respectively, while its temperature at the upper end is 150 Kelvin, but they don't tell us the pressure at the upper end, so that's an unknown. Pressure 2 is an unknown. The chimney is heat insulated so that the gas undergoes adiabatic expansion. That's the key. It's an adiabatic expansion. And uh, they tell us to take G as 10 meters per second square, and the ratio of the specific heats of the gas, gamma, is 2. So that's also important. It's a hypothetical number. Real gases don't have that, but we'll just take it as is. Ignore atmospheric pressure. Which of the following statements is or are correct? So here are the four statements that we need to verify if they're correct or not. The pressure of the gas at the upper end is 300 pascals. The velocities of the gas are V1 at 40 meters per second and V2 at 20 meters per second. Now, do they give us one of the velocities here? Uh, I think I lost it. Uh, let's see here. I thought they gave us V1, but I'm looking at it and maybe not. I don't think they give us V1. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and say, well, that's also an unknown. So this is an unknown. V1 is an unknown and V2 is an unknown. So we have to find both velocities. All right. The height of the chimney is 590 meters, and the density of the gas at the upper end is 0 0.05 kilograms per cubic meter. So I just want to double check here that they did not give us the velocity at either end. All right, good. They didn't give us the velocity at either end, so we have to figure that out. Now, uh, where do we start? And so that's the key, right? Where do we even start? How do you start a problem like this? So first of all, since it's adiabatic, I think that's a big deal right here. Since it's adiabatic, we can think of right away of two equations that we may be able to use. The first equation is P1V1 to the gamma equals P2V2 to the gamma. Now the problem with that equation is that we don't know both pressures. We know pressure at 1, but we don't know pressure at 2, so that's a problem. We could also use the equation T1 V1 to the gamma minus 1 equals T2 V2 to the gamma minus 1. Now here we're given both T1 and T2, so that's probably the equation we want to use. Since they give us gamma, we can simplify that equation, write it as T1 V1 to the 2 minus 1, which is to the first power, equals T2 V2 to the first power, since gamma is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. All right. That means that the ratio of the volumes is somehow proportional to the ratio of the, of the temperatures. Hmm. All right. But then, I should also know that the definition of density is equal to mass over volume, volume and we know that mass remains constant. 
which means that volume equals mass divided by density, or we can say that V1 equals M over density 1, and V2 equals mass over density 2. That implies that V1 over V2 is equal to density 2 over density 1. So the ratio of the volumes is going to be proportional to, to the, the inverse of the ratio of the densities. So then I can say here that T1 over uh, T1 over T2 is equal to V2 over V1, which is equal to density 1 over density 2. And finally, I can then solve for density 2. I can say that density 2 is equal to density 1, if I bring density 2 over here, times T2 over T1, which is equal to density 1 is 0 0.2 times the ratio of T2 over T1, T2 is 150, T1 is 300, which is equal to 0 0.1 kilograms per cubic meter. And now we're ready to answer at least one of the questions, because here they tell us that the density of the gas at the upper end is 0 0.05, and we said no, it is 0.1, so therefore we know that D is not a correct answer. All right. What's next? How about pressure? Since it's an ideal gas, we could still say that P1, uh, PV equals NRT. And therefore we could say that PV over T equals NR equals a constant. Which means that P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. Now notice what we're looking for is we're looking for pressure 2 because we know pressure 1. So we can then say that pressure 2 equals pressure 1, V1 over T1, then bring in the T over here, T2 over V2 over here. Now notice again we have that ratio of volume 1 over volume 2, but we can say that's equal to the inverse ratio of the densities. So we say that this is equal to P1 density 2 T2 over T1 density 1. And that allows us to find P2. So P2 is equal to pressure 1, which is 600, times density 2. Density 2, we found it to be 0 0.1. Temperature 2. Temperature 2 is... 150 divided by temperature 1, which is 300, and V2, well, not V2, but density 1, density 1 was 0 0.2. So, so we have 1 half times 1 half is 1 quarter times 600, that would be 150 pascals. So that is pressure 2, so I, I believe that's one of the questions, so the pressure of the gas at upper end, pressure 2 is 300, that's not correct, it is 150, so A is not correct as well. Wow. So that leaves us with two more to check. So now we need to find the velocities of the gas, our V1 equals 40 meters per second and V2 is a 20 meters per second. So when we deal with the flow of the gas, we have this equation right here. We have the equation where delta V delta T is equal to the velocity times the cross-sectional area. Now we do have the cross-sectional areas, we don't have the velocities, but what about delta V delta T? Well, at the lower end, we know the density, and we know there's a ratio between volume and density because we come back over here and so we can say that volume is mass divided by density so volume 1 is equal to the mass at 1 which is the same as mass at 2 because that remains constant divided by density 1 so mass is 0 0.8 and the density at 1 is 0 0.2 so that means that it's 4 cubic meters per second for the delta V delta T. So then I can say that V1 is equal to delta V delta T at 1 divided by A,
but delta V delta T can be found to be 4 divided by the cross-sectional area, which is a 1 was 0 0.1. So that gives me 40 meters per second. And that is my first velocity right here. So that is correct. How about the second velocity? Well, V2 equals delta V delta T at 2 divided by the cross-sectional area. So then I go for my second one. Here we are. So V2 is equal to the mass, which is the same as M1, divided by density one, uh, density 2, which is 0 0.8 divided by the density was 0 0.1. So that's equal to 8. So in this case, this is equal to 8 divided by the cross-sectional area, which is now 4 times as big, 0 0.4, which is 20 meters per second. And so we can see that V1, 40, V2, 20, that matches what we found. So therefore we say, all right, B is one of the correct answers. Now let's see about C. Is that another correct answer or is that another wrong answer? Now we need to find the height of the chimney. So for that, we can use Bernoulli's equation. So Bernoulli's equation says that P1 plus rho GH1 plus one half rho v1 squared is equal to p2 plus rho gh2 plus one half rho v2 squared. Like this. Now if we assume h1 at the bottom to be zero, then this goes to zero, right? So we can assume that's zero height, and so we're looking for height two. So that means that H2 is equal to P1 plus 1 half rho van V1 squared minus P2, and move that across, minus 1 half rho V2 squared all divided by G times density 2. All right, now plug in the numbers. Let's see what we get. P1, 600, plus... 1 half density 1, so 1 half times density 1, which was 0, oh, density 1, 0 0.2 times V1 squared, and V1 is 40, that's 40 squared, minus pressure 2, which is 150, minus 1 half times density 2, density 2 was 0 0.1, and V2 squared, that would be 20 squared. All divided by G, which we're told to take it as 10, and density 2 is 0 0.1. Ah, notice that the denominator goes to 1. That makes it easy, so that's just simply 1. Numerator, we get 600 plus 1600 uh, times 0 0.2. 0 0.2, that would be 8 times 4, that's 320, that's 160 minus 150 and minus 440 20 20 so we get that is 600 plus 10 minus 20 that's 590 and that number looks familiar because that's what we're looking at right here so notice that c is also one of the correct answers wow i can see why i'm so surprised because there's four different concepts we have to deal with to solve this problem First, we had to find density one, uh, density two, and to do that, we use one of these two equations right here. I'm tripping over my wire, so I gotta be careful here. All right, so one of these two equations, because it's an adiabatic expansion, this seems to make most sense because we know T1 and T2, and then for the volume, since gamma is two, we end up with this equation, and with the ratio of the volumes, we can see that that's equal to the inverse of the ratio of the densities using this equation. So that gives us density 2. To get the pressure, we use PV equals nRT, so we know that P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. We don't worry about not knowing the volumes because the ratio of the volumes is equal to the inverse of the ratio of the densities, which we do know. And so from that, we can find pressure 2. Then to find the velocities, we use the concept of, of the amount of volume per unit time flowing through a pipe is equal to V times A, the velocity times the cross-sectional area. But in this case, 
we don't know what the delta V delta T is until we solve for it. And so we come back over here and we can see that the amount of volume going through is equal to the mass divided by the density at that point. The mass remains constant, but the density changes. That changes the amount of volume per unit time that goes through. So for a single second, we can say that it's this much volume over the cross-section area for V1 and this much volume over the cross-section area for V2. And so those two do match. And finally, we, knew, we need to use Bernoulli's equation. Notice that we now know all the densities, we know all the pressures, we know all the velocities. We can set H1 equal to zero as the reference point. H2 is what we're looking for. When we plug in the numbers, we see that it matches the answer they gave us. So that is how we solve this particular problem. For me, when I saw it the first time, it took a little while to figure out where, where do I even start. And so if you're not sure where to start, right away, you pick out some of the key things and you write down some of these key equations, like this equation, this equation right here, the density equation. So from that, we're able to solve for one of the unknowns. The PVRT is always correct no matter what the process is in a gas, so we're able to use that equation. This is always true for the flow of a, of a, of a fluid through a pipe, but notice that the delta V delta T may not be constant, which it is for a, for a liquid, but not for a gas. And then finally Bernoulli's equation, because we're dealing with flow through a pipe. So finding the order in which we have to do that is kind of a tricky thing, and that may take some while to figure out, unfortunately. So when you're time pressed, this would be difficult to do in three minutes. Uh, the board? Yeah. I have what given? V2. No, no, no. In the right bank is your drawing. You mean right here? No, 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 no. Go right, no, no, up, 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 right down. A little bit to the left. Oh, oh, velocity too. Oh, yeah, that's also not true, is it? That's also an unknown. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Neither of the velocities were given. For some reason, I thought the velocities were given, but they were not. So 